I was so drunk, I can't remember. <laughs> He was drunk. Two bucks was made. Uh huh. And the title is Wild Geese Three. <laughs> I used to refer to Tim as the man, the myth, the methane. <laughs> I wanted to pretend that I wasn't feeling a little jolly belly. <laughs> oh, I'm a fan of uh, Starcraft. <laughs> you watched him during your lunch break at work. <laughs> I'd like to uh, thank you all for giving me characters over the years that I really do care about. I especially like, I especially love the quark Godo relationship. I find it very reminiscent to Spock and McCoy. And I, I found um, Far Beyond the Stars an extremely moving experience, and I'd like to thank you for that one as well. I've got a question for Armin. Um, in the early days of um, Deep Space Nine, you reported as being unhappy about quark simply being comedy relief. Um, are you happy, happier now with the way you've been allowed to portray them a little bit more sinister? No. Uh, I'm still unhappy that uh, <coughs> the dimensions of quark really haven't changed that much. We know more about him. Yes, we know about his family. Uh, we know uh, lots of things about him, but he really hasn't matriculated uh, as much as I think uh, most of the other characters on the show have. Um, and so, to that extent, I'm still, I mean, in fact, Rom has, has matriculated more, so has Nog, uh, than, than Quark has. And, and uh, I'm a little disappointed by that. I, I, I must say that, um, that the only times that I've really sort of gotten a chance to do things that may not be what the writers specifically want, is, is uh, when these three guys are directing. Uh, uh, in each of their episodes, uh, I force them. <laughs> They've all done Quark episodes. Have you ever noticed that when, he, when an actor directs for the first time, they get a Quark episode? <laughs> uh, uh, and I sort of, I, I sort of, you know, uh, really strongly advocated that I do something that wasn't necessarily in the script, and these guys have been terrific about taking the heat and allowing me to do it. Uh, then we've had to reshoot it. We've had to go back and reshoot it, because Ira calls and says, why did you let him do that? Because <laughs> I'm headstrong. What can I tell you? Oh. My wife said to him, well, you've got a full head of, what'd she say? You've got a full head of ear. Yeah, full head of ear. <laughs> You're not bald, you've got a full head of ear. But you know, it's, a, it's an interesting, and I don't know who it's a tribute to, but it, that gentleman's comment, which, um, is very gratifying about uh, enjoying the relationship between Odo and, and Quark, because in fact, it has not been, that was established sort of in the pilot, and fiddled around with for the first couple of seasons, and then Armin and I are always sort of bemused, we love it, that people bring it up, they like, like our relationship, but we've only had one show in which we've gotten, to, that was The Ascent, where we got to really work together consistently for the whole show. Usually, it's a matter of him walking into security, insulting me, me walking into the bar, insulting him, and that's just about it. I, maybe it's uh, maybe it's because it's sort of like Stilton cheese. A little bit of this goes a very long way. <laughs> um, Are you I calling us cheating? No, he's over there now. How'd you uh, get over there? <laughs> well, this mic was open, so... Uh, <laughs> uh, Yesterday I was talking to somebody and they were talking about the writers of Deep Space Nine and they were saying, well, none of those guys could write for a sitcom and I totally disagree because some of the funniest things I've seen on TV has been on your show. The Magnificent Ferengi kills me. This game. I mean, you're talking about comedic twists and turns when when the Ferengi shot movie, I was on the floor. I mean, that would be the purpose. They would arrest you and kill her. Cecily, how did you feel about that? <laughs> I mean, so how do you guys feel about, because your show, to be quite honest, never stays in the same framework of what you expect on television. One minute you guys are doing serious drama, the next show you're doing a, a broad comedy, and I mean, is, is it fun to do that? Is it fun to change gears like that? I know there are some people who can't get into that. They just, they always think they not decide what they want to do or what they want to be. I love it. I, I love that each week, I don't know what you guys are going to do and what, you guys are going to present to us. How does it feel to be able to change views like that every week? It's great. I mean, it's the, that's one of the things that keeps it fresh and interesting for me personally. I love uh, <laughs> Voyager 
Rogers out there, guys. Don't you want to get yeah, 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 yeah. bored with us now? Like, come on, Rhett. Ah! No, no, okay. tell them to wait until you finish answering my questions. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Robert, Robert, you'll have to wait. <laughs> Tim, the one, he's the one that goes ballistic. He gets really weird. You should see him. You, you think you're bad. You, they keep you waiting for a shot. You keep Tim Russ waiting for a shot. For time's sake. He's got your ears on the wall. I'll repeat the questions. That's right. The questions are the answers, Robert. So lie back, relax. We've got a while. I guess, I guess we should just wrap this up. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Listen, thank you very much.